Hey guys, welcome back to How to Roll Dice. I'm Josh, and in today's video, I wanted to go over the second section or second group of purchases that I made at Gen Con 2022, which was a week ago. I already did a video on all of the RPGs that I purchased. This video is going to be on the board game expansions that I purchased. Now, this is only going to be expansions for games that I already owned. I'm not gonna cover expansions that I bought with new games that I purchased. That'll be in the new games video, which will be the next and final video that I do. Um, but these are going to be expansions for games that I already owned, and I did pick up quite a few. A lot of them were ones that I didn't know existed, and some of them are also for games that my wife has purchased. So they're sort of technically not mine, but they are mine because our collection is just one giant collection. So first off, I want to do the one game that I purchased that is not just an expansion or an upgrade, but it's actually a whole new copy of that game mixed with expansions and upgrades, and that is the Shogun Big Box, this right here. I did not know this existed. I was going by the Queen Games booth uh, because I wanted to check it out because they make games like Shogun and several other games that I love. Um, and I saw this sitting on the shelf and I was like, oh my God, I didn't know Shogun had a big box. And I asked what was in the box and they said it's the base game plus four expansions, Tenno's Court, Samurai, Military Leaders, and Chambers, which is basically all of the expansions that have ever come out for the game. And I'll show you the back of the box here. Those are all the expansions there. So Samurai, I, I know I've mentioned it quite a few times. I think I've done a full review on it. Samurai has quickly become one of my like top five, top three, maybe favorite board games of all time. I've played it a ton. I love it. I do not get tired of it. I didn't know there were any expansions for it, but they're made by the same designers and creators that the base game is. So I'm sure they're just as good and just as well sort of like adapted into the game as the, the main game is as far as quality goes and as far as just like how well it's going to play. Um, so very happy to have found this. It does mean that I have to find a new home for my existing copy of Shogun, which is a 2008 copy. It's in great condition, though. I found it still wrapped up uh, at a local game store. Um, so I now have the big box and I'll be giving that one away to a friend or donating it in some form or another. Uh, and then I also found right next to this, obviously at Queen Games, the Shogun upgrade kit, this right here. So this basically upgrades all of the tokens in the game. Your buildings go from small cardboard circular discs to mark the three different types of buildings to actual plastic pieces that physically represent the buildings. Your money goes from being represented by small colored wooden chests in denominations of one or five to a slew of different metal coins that actually represent Japanese currency. Uh, you've got some plastic discs to represent your revolt markers. You've got some sort of like samurai staff holders or sword holders to represent uh, player order or player positioning on the board when it comes to choosing um, what you know special actions you're going to gain for a Spartan season. All of your uh, actual armies are now marked by small little wooden meeple figures instead of just wooden cubes. That's going to be interesting to see how it changes how they fall through the cube tower. Um, and then you've got, uh, I think I already mentioned, the revolt markers and the rice markers are all plastic now. So very nice little upgrade kit to make the game much more lush and, uh, and fancy. So this is the only game uh, and upgrade and expansions that I bought that actually replaces a whole game. So let me move this off to the side here and we'll get into the standard expansions. And again, these are only going to be for games that I already own, not expansions that I bought with new games. That'll be in the next video. So let's start with this right here. This is a nice little small box one. This is upgrades one or expansions one and two for Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico uh, is, again, a game that I picked up recently. It's an older copy. I think mine's from 2002. Found it still sealed. Um, and these are the two expansions that exist for that game. It's not huge. Basically adds some new tiles and some new uh, player options. Um, but I feel like adding just a little bit uh, to make a game that you love have a little bit more depth to it, although it already has plenty of depth. This adds a bit more. There's nothing wrong with it, that. And this was relatively cheap. The weird thing about this was the Ravensburger booth or the booth, the, the, the vendor that sells Ravensburger stuff, he was there last Last year, too, uh, he was there again this year, obviously. Uh, he's always kind of a hot mess. He always looks like he's strung out. Um, he it, it always smells a bit like he's like drinking some kind of vodka or some has some alcohol mix out of his canteen. I mean, he's doing a great job. He's, he's moving merch and his booth has so much Ravensburger stuff. But every time you go in there, it's kind of like it, it's a bit wired in that booth. It, you know, it's a 10 foot by 10 foot booth. He's got merch stacked 10 feet high. He's got columns and pillars of games. Things are like kind of disorganized, but kind of organized in like an organized chaos kind of way. Um, it's a very unique booth compared to everything else at Gen Con, but he does a great job and he always has awesome stuff. So did not know I was going to find that, poked around for a little bit, saw a bunch of th things that I already owned and spotted that sitting down on a shelf. And I was like, beautiful. We love Puerto Rico. Here's the expansions for it. Boom. Um, then from Elf Creek, 
We have a game from them called Honey Buzz. It's a very good game. I have not done a review on it yet, but we've played it a couple of times and we like it quite a bit. We definitely want to play it more. And we're certainly going to play it more now that we have these. So these are, I believe, two upgrade kits to the components and one expansion. So first off, I'll do the expansion. Uh, this is the Honey Pot. Um, this is the expansion for Honey Buzz. This is a game my wife picked up and she really enjoyed it and we all enjoyed it. And so she saw these and she wanted to get them. They actually had these available last year when the game was released, but they had sold out of these. They only had copies of the base game left. So we grabbed the base game and this year we got the expansion as well as these two upgrades. So this is deluxe components for to replace all of the components in the entire base game. And then this is wooden coins to replace, I believe, the cardboard coins that the game comes with out of the box. And they're in cute little sort of like hexagon cone, uh, comb, honeycomb shapes. So that's cute. So we got those. Uh, next, from the uh, DeVere booth, who make Red Cathedral that we like very much. Uh, this is the first expansion, I think currently the only expansion for Red Cathedral contractors, and it comes with an exclusive promo, which normally it doesn't. And you can see that right there. This actually adds a whole new section to your player board below the main player board for contractors and adds some additional resources and some components into the game. You can see that there. So very excited to give that a shot. And the guy at the DeVere booth was very nice. Um, I actually, everybody that I talked to at these different booths, um, assuming it seemed like they had enough time for a quick little chat, I also passed off a Captain Con uh, business card to them and basically said, hey, I'm part of the Captain Con team. We're a convention in the Northeast. We're always looking for vendors, sponsors, suppliers, um, people to come and set up their own shop. And so I was handing cards out to all these guys. And you'd be amazed with all of the commotion going on and the excitement of the con weekend. I mean, Gen Con is like the largest gaming convention in the world. These guys are still happy to have like a quick little like two minute conversation with you about like your convention or what you're doing or how much you love their games or things that they're working on right now that might relate to things that you like, like games that they've sold that they now have upcoming or upcoming expansions for. So always nice to talk to these guys. The guy at the DeVere booth, very cool. The people at Elf Creek, all these different booths are very, very cool. Very nice to talk to. Um, the ladies at the uh, Queen Games booth, very nice. Uh, the guy at the Ravensburger booth, like I said, was a little strung out and busy, uh, so I didn't really have a conversation with him, but I, I got what I wanted. So, you know, he did his job. Um, from that, let's move on to this right here. This is for the game Furnace by Arcane Wonders, which currently is the only game I know of from them. This is actually a nice, um, what do you call it? A nice neoprene play mat for Furnace that lays out where all of the, uh, the cards will go. There's no way that my camera is going to, going to let me focus on this. Is that even right side up? No, nope, there you go. It's probably going to focus on my face. That's fine. As well as some promo cards for the game. A lot of times when you're at conventions like Gen Con and you make a purchase, even a small purchase, they'll have some limited promo that you can only get from that convention or from the convention circuit that year that adds little components, extra cards, extra bits, not a full upgrade, but something extra into a game that you love. And that's one of the cool reasons uh, to go to a con is that you can get lots of promo stuff. So got that neoprene mat and got those cards for Furnace. We've really been enjoying Furnace a lot. Um, it's it's probably one of my top four, I'm uh, sorry, top, top five quick four player games that plays fast and is easy to learn, but doesn't feel overly simple. Um, it's, it's really good. I really enjoy it. It's also super affordable. So having a neoprene mat for that to spice it up a little bit as far as quality and look on the table goes, happy about that. Um, then from the newly, uh, newly purchased or, or newly owned uh, Ghost Galaxy, um, we have these two Keyforge adventures. If you don't know, Keyforge was recently sold or transferred from um, Fantasy Flight Games to who I believe originally published it and have been publishing it since it came out to Ghost Galaxy, which is a company I didn't really know anything about prior to them having purchased the franchise. Um, but these are two Key Forge adventures, which I didn't know existed. Pretty cool. Uh, one is called Wise of the Kuraken, or Rise of the Kuraken, because Key Forge, Key Raken. Um, the other is the Abyssal Conspiracy. Um, these are cooperative uh, adventures for one to three players using standard Keyforge decks playing against these automated Keyforge decks that are meant to represent a boss. So you're basically playing through a stacked deck that's sort of an adventure with a boss at the end, and you're playing against that boss with one to three players using their favorite standard Keyforge decks. So that's pretty cool because I already like Keyforge, but the fact that it's a 1v1 and it's competitive, it doesn't give it too much versatility. You just kind of keep buying decks and keep playing with different friends. Uh, the fact that now you can play cooperatively in up to three players or even by yourself against this deck is really cool. And we've got two of them. Uh, these also say that they are Gen Con special editions. I'm not exactly sure what that means other than when I looked these up online, the packaging looked different. I don't know if there's actually different components or material inside of those packages, but we'll see. And to go along with that, we actually purchased this 
massive neoprene mat. Sorry about the, the crunchy sounds. Um, this massive neoprene mat, they actually had one for each of those adventures. We got the one with the Kraken on it, the, the giant Kraken. Um, and this is a huge rollout mat that's meant to sort of create the battlefield that you're playing on. So on one side of this mat, it actually has all of the different spaces marked for the different cards that are going to represent these adventures and the bosses and the monsters that come out of these decks. And then on the opposite side of the mat is where you and your teammates, or even just you if you're playing solo, are placing your cards to fight against it. So again, it, it creates kind of a nice environment, a sort of upscale look look to what would otherwise be just a basic card game. Same reason that when you're playing like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, you go out and you buy a little play mat and you put some card sleeves on your cards. It's not necessarily because they're valuable, maybe they are. Uh, it's not necessarily because you want to have a clean play area, but that is part of what it is. It's that putting those extra components on the table adds some quality and some some high class feel to what is otherwise a very budget, of, budget affordable, like not low end, but like, you know, nothing fancy about it kind of game. So having stuff like this is nice. So we're excited to give that a try. And it's cool because my wife actually hasn't played Keyforge yet. It's just been me and Bryant. And now we have a reason to pull her in and say, hey, you don't have to play it in a competitive way. We have a cooperative version now and the three of us can play together against this bad guy. So if those are good, I really hope they make more of those adventures. That would be awesome. Um, then for War Chest, I found both of the expansions for War Chest. This is Siege and Mobility. You can see those there. I love how they look like books, like tomes. Um, and they go with the base box of war chests. They add in a bunch of new playable, I forget what they're called, not factions, units. Um, one is obviously adding siege weapons. So you've got things like the sapper, the war wagon, uh, catapult, ballista. And then the other one is adding in nobility. So you've got the herald, the uh, bannerman, uh, bannerman, sorry, bannerman, um, sacrifice some special actions that are coming into play. So cool stuff there with those. I don't know why it is when I'm filming these videos. I notice it all the time when I'm editing. I'm constantly like trying to hold a burp in my throat. I have no feeling of that before I start filming the video. And then I start filming the video and immediately I'm like choking on a burp the entire time. And I don't want to burp directly into the microphone. But otherwise I end up making this like Ugh, like I can't I can't like talk correctly. It's really obnoxious. Anyways, back to the stuff. So the last chunk of stuff that I have here, you can see this is quite a pile over here, is all for Everdell. Now, Everdell is a game that my wife originally bought. I think I've mentioned this recently. We played it a couple times. We went, wow, that's a really nice game. And then we kind of shelved it and never came back to it. This was years ago. We got it at Gen Con. It's the limited edition box. We met the creator. He signed the inside of the box for us. So it's nice that we have it, but we never really thought much about it. We just thought mm, that's a nice game. And then we moved on. Um, and then years passed. And then somebody mentioned like, oh, did you see there's a new expansion for Everdale coming out? And we're like, oh, that's cool. Some, you know, it must have some popularity then. And we went and looked it up and it's like, no, no, that's the fourth major expansion for a game that now has a gigantic cult following. Um, and the expansions aren't as simple as like, oh, it adds some cards or some components. Or now instead of four players, you can play with five. Although it does do those things. It actually takes the board that Everdell uses, which is this giant uh, three-dimensional tree called the Ever Tree that actually holds cards and tokens, as well as all of this sort of like, printed space underneath the tree that shows a river and a village and different piles of resources. It's a very interactive, like three dimensional map almost. It takes additional map sections in each of these expansions and literally bolts them into that board, making the board larger. Like they planned all of this from the get go. You can see how they fit together like puzzle pieces. If you just own the base box, and you were looking at it, you wouldn't realize it. But as soon as you take one of these expansions and you pull it out of the box, you go, oh my God, it it, it literally physically plugs right into the base board. They planned this. Um, so it both uh, mechanically and physically expands the game. It's very cool. So first off, we got this here. This was a little special promo that they were running. I think we got it for like 10 or 15 bucks. This is a wooden ever tree. So the three dimensional ever tree, that's usually cardboard when you buy the base box, which works fine. It's pretty flat, it maybe rocks a little bit but it's lightweight, you could bump it. This is a nice like laser cut uh, wooden ever tree that's also painted to look like the ever tree. So that's a nice little, again, quality upgrade, a nice little quality feature. It doesn't necessarily change the way the game plays, but makes it look and feel a little bit more high end. Then we got these three expansions. Uh, two of them are limited edition or collector's edition. One is not simply because there was no collector's edition of it left. I think there's one other expansion that's either on its way out right now or just came out and they didn't have any left. Um, but we have Everdell Belfair. This is the first expansion. 
And again, uh, the thing about these is not only do they add more cards and components and mechanics, but they also physically expand the game. So if you look at the back of this, you can see it almost looks like a little fair, a little marketplace. Same that's shown on the front cover. It's a little fair across the river there, across that little bridge under the tree. That board will physically slide into and like puzzle piece into the main board to actually expand the size of the play area. Um, then we have uh, Everdell Spirecrest. This is one of the collector's editions. And these are pretty weighty boxes. These are not like lightweight rinky dink expansions. There's there's a lot going on inside of these. And again, expands the board, adds new components. There's some kind of a giant yak on this. There's a little fox expeditionary who's like walking around. There's mounts for your characters. You're riding on ostriches and on rhinoceroses. I have no idea what's going on here. There's a squirrel riding a wolf like this. This is not a small expansion. This adds large mechanics uh, to the way the game functions. And you can play with all of these together. They're all meant to bolt into the game together and just like create this massive board game with tons of like growing rule sets to it. It's very cool. And then Everdell Pearlbrook, also collector's edition right here. And this adds a whole waterfront to the game, as well as underwater cards and different water creatures that you can interact with. And the fact that now you can go out and go fishing or sailing and hunting for pearls, which are a new form of resource. And one of these, uh, I can't remember which, also adds in the ability for a fifth player. Normally, Everdell is a four player game. One of these uh, brings you up to a five player game. So now you've got a board that's grown exponentially in size, tons of new mechanics, tons of new tokens, components, miniatures, cards, and the fact that you can go up to five players. So that's a great little set of expansions. We're very excited to plug all three of those in and play a game at sort of like full capacity. Uh, I know there is one more expansion because I'm remembering it now that has something to do with a train station where there's like a, it adds a whole train station to the board. Um, don't know how that functions or anything, but I know we don't have it in here. So maybe that's either they were sold out or it's still on its way out. Maybe it's not released yet. But yeah, these are all the expansions that we got. Very happy with all of them and the fact that I have a brand new, like fully maxed out uh, Shogun, which I'm very happy about. Um, but yeah, so very, very happy we got all of these. Um, next video, I'm gonna jump into all of the new games that we purchased and all of the expansions that we bought with the new games. Cause sometimes you buy a new game and you look at the game and you go, well, you know what? The game looks good. I've learned about it. I've talked to them. I've gotten the rundown on the game. Maybe you've played a demo of the game. <clears throat> and uh, then you you finish up the sales pitch and they go also for 12 more dollars as a promo price. We have this full expansion that adds in all this other stuff. And you're like, all right, I'm spending $70 on this game. It sounds great. Is it is am I going to nitpick another $15 to add all this extra stuff, even if it's just a components upgrade like, oh, your wooden cubes turn into wooden cultists. So that's something in one of the games that we picked up called um, Eschaton or something like that. I can't I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced because it's in fancy Gothic lettering. Um, but my Bryant actually picked that up, was a big fan of it. So he got the expansion that goes with the base game and then an upgrade kit that just changes a bunch of your basic components into fancy high end components. And it was like 15 or 20 bucks for the uh, the high end components. But again, if you're already throwing like like 80, 90, $100 into a game, it, what's another 20 to make the whole thing nicer? Just top to bottom. Like it's like, would you like the basic version of the game or would you like the nice version of the game? Well, unless I'm strapped for cash right now, I, I want the nice version of the game. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a thing that I'm gonna put on my shelf and take care of and pull out and play and show to friends. I want it to be as nice as possible within reason. Um, and so a lot of times when you're buying a brand new game in a con, if they're like, oh, also we have this little thing that goes with it for another 10 or 20 bucks. You're like, yeah, throw it in there. What I, what do I care? I don't, I'm already spending 60, 70, 80 bucks, whatever. Just toss it in, why not? I, especially if it's something that's brand new, it's gonna sell out. You're never gonna be able to find it again. It's gonna take six months for you to, to get a copy of it. Just grab it then. Um, it's, it's that Gen Con mindset. I've talked about it in the past. Um, but anyways, yeah, next video will be all the new board games and their expansions. This was expansions for existing games. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I will see you real soon. Have a good one.